Welcome. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Lindsay McMillan. I am an instructor at, U, uh, at UAB for UFIT classes online now. Uh, we are now going to be doing our second class for the Mindful Yoga Virtual Yoga section. So, go ahead and get into the position. We're going to start seated today. Just by noticing your breath, but coming into a seated position here with our feet grounded in front. Hands can just rest. We're just going to start by moving the spine with our breath. So inhaling, reaching that heart up and between the shoulder blades. Really exhaling those shoulders in the back as you roll down. Go ahead and catching your breath, finding your own rhythm here. And as fast or as slow as you need to. Deepening your inhales. Music went off, or if it's just on pause, I can't hear the music anymore. <laughs> Look at the arms here. We're going to start to bring the arms all the way up, really lifting out of the heart, and then as we roll back, bringing the arms down to our sides. So just adding a little bit of abdominal crunch. slowly start to float the weight forward and all the way coming into a kneeling plank position so the knees are down we're just going to come all the way down onto the belly so gently lowering the elbows back and coming down all the way to the belly and then inhaling to reach the chest and the heart forward and up squeeze the shoulder blades together and then exhaling back down as we press into the mat with our hands to lift the body back up and back to child's pose. So just nice and easy, slow movements here, floating back towards the hands and lowering down to the belly on an exhale. Maybe pushing a little taller each time, just slowly warming up those back muscles. 
Today's class is probably going to be pretty low impact. I'm feeling a little slow today myself, so there's no rush here. We're all in this together. We'll do one more time through here. Seeing with on this last time through, maybe pressing all the way up. The upward facing dog, slightly lifting those hips off the mat, rounding down through the shoulder blades, and then maybe lifting all the way up, lifting those hips up to downward facing dog, and just gently pressing one foot at a time. See if you can focus on creating a straight line from your fingertips to the tailbone. breathing, just pedaling one foot at a time, and we'll slowly begin to inhale and lift our right foot out behind, to lower the leg on the exhale, we're going to bring that leg forward, and all the way into a lunge if you can, feel free to lower this back knee, lift the foot forward but we'll come into this low lunge here. And kind of like we did last week, just gently starting to float forward and back into our hamstring stretch. Go ahead and take a breath if you can. Last time, come forward into this forward lunge position. And go ahead, go ahead and come up on that back toe and then rotate the ankle about 45 degrees. We're just going to come into warrior one on this right leg. Really feeling that spine lifting up out of the lower back. Reaching through the fingertips, keeping those shoulders down. And we'll exhale back to the belly. This time just stepping back to downward dog. Take a deep breath here. We're going to inhale and float forward into a plank position. You need to lower your knees. So we'll come all the way down to the belly. And then inhaling back up to upward facing dog. And then coming all the way back. The downward facing dog. Preparing for our other side. And that left leg out behind. Really extending through that heel and then curling the knee between the shoulders and then just finally kicking that foot between the hands if you can. We're going to lower this right knee and then go ahead and maybe inhale the lift up or you can go ahead and start to float back your hamstring stretch. Just make sure that you're flowing, letting go of your own, you know, judgments of yourself or any kind of competition, any sense of not being good enough or not having what you need at this moment. Resting our hands here again. We're going to lift that back foot and come into warrior one. I'm actually going to have to stop for just a second because I, my computer might die. <laughs> we'll be back. Is that working? Dang it. <laughs> You're good. Thank you. Is my screen still showing? Because I feel like uh, left foot back this time. So I think I actually need to be on this side. Sorry, left foot back this time. We're in warrior one again. 
on the other leg. We hold here for a few breaths if we can. And we'll go ahead and come back down to our lunge. And then lifting the hips to step back to downward dog. Take a few moments to breathe here. And we'll float forward to our plank position. From here, we're going to go down to the belly through our chaturanga or um, what we call our half series flow. Mm -hmm. Inhaling down and then inhaling up. Back to down, upward. <coughs> and back to downward dog. Then we'll just go ahead and walk those feet to the center of your mat. And we'll slowly curl up to a standing position. We can recenter here at the front of our mat. Kind of take a moment to kind of feel the heat in your legs. Hopefully you feel a little warmer. Before we move into our balance pose, I do want to try to open up the hips a little bit more. So we're going to try our sunflower and moonflower pose, kind of like last week. Same pose. And what we do is we point our toes to the corner of the mat and then inhale the arms up. And as we exhale, just hinging down into a nice wide squat here. And again, moving with the breath, just trying to open up and get some flow with your movements, with your breath. Really allowing your body and your mind to focus in on what is most important for you and what your body is needing today. Yeah. And so let's go ahead and bring our hands back to either side and stepping the feet a little closer together now. We're going to move into our balance pose. So we're just tree pose today. You want to just pick one foot and placing the other leg either on the thigh or down here on the calf. Try to avoid placing it on the knee. You don't really want to be pushing outward on a joint that bends a different way. So just try to find a flat, solid place on your leg, whether that's your thigh or your shin. And we're coming into tree pose here. So arms can be overhead. They can be here at your heart center. You can have them out to either side, but make sure you feel that your toes are spread nice and wide and they're gripping into that mat at the bottom. Hips are both pulling downward with gravity. And the crown of the head is lifted up. And if you really like to challenge yourself here in tree pose, see if you can maybe close your eyes. It's amazing how much <laughs> more difficult it is to balance without your eyes. And then when you're ready, we can go ahead and lower that leg down, switch to the other side. So, lifting those arms up overhead again, hips drawing down on either side. And we feel that this leg is pretty much just propped up by the other leg. It's not a whole lot of uh, effort is in, as far as to keep the leg up. Unless we're down here, because then you do feel a little bit more of that kind of drawing up of the leg. It's up here at the thigh. It's a lot more of like a just this prop for your foot. <laughs> so come out of our tree pose when y'all are ready. Go ahead and take a breath if you need it. So let's go ahead and bring it back down to a forward fold. We can inhale our arms out to the side and just hinge forward at a 90 degree angle, coming down all the way, relaxing the head. Go ahead and nod your head forward and back. 
turning the head from side to side. If you want to, you can hold on to the elbows and sway your back from side to side. Now, before we move down into some more floor stretches, why don't we take our feet a little bit wider here. And we'll just add a little bit of a twist like we did last week, bringing one arm all the way up to the ceiling. And we'll exhale it back around. Inhaling the other arm up. And so just flowing at your own pace, one side, feeling the back gently twist. See if, you, see if you can stack your shoulders and maybe reach a little further with each breath. And we'll come back to center. And if you can, just lower those hips down into a nice wide squat here. Let's press the hands together at your heart. We can press the heart forward between the shoulders, kind of widening those hips, feeling the toes are kind of able to lift off the mat. The weight is in the heels if possible. If you need to, you can also have something to sit on. If you have a block, this is a really great way to just um, practice a deeper hip stretch is to use something to support the body. You know, if, you're, if your heels are not able to touch down, don't give up on yourself. Just add some support up underneath and that's what you do. So let's go ahead and roll back and sit down onto our sit bones and we'll bring it into just an easy butterfly. No reason to try to be too uh, aggressive here, just gently allowing your legs to kind of relax open. You might like to kind of roll on your glute, glutes a little bit. And so then we'll come back to long, facing long way on your mat. And just bringing it into a simple staff pose having those legs together here in the front and then inhaling to reach the arms up, lifting that heart out of the lower back if you can. And then see if we can start from the belly button, hinging forward or letting the heart guide you even. And then starting to lower the arms down to the ankles. So hold and breathe here for three breaths. Now, if we're holding here, that's fine. If you feel like you're rounding, you're not able to hold on, just bend the knees a little bit. It's okay to bend the knees. It actually means that you're, so our hamstrings, interestingly, start way up here in our, in our hip. And so if you have tight hamstrings, it could be because it's in your lower back as well. So a lot of times having straight legs is not really the best way get to that muscle. So bending the knees is fine and then just making sure that you're feeling that lower back stretching open. And then let's go ahead and roll back down onto our spine and we'll just take it into some four stretches here. Take a moment to let your back kind of relax open on the floor. And just drawing one knee up towards the chest, feeling that leg draw closer to the body, releasing that tension in the lower back. If you'd like to, you can open the hip out to the side and kind of roll the hip around. Or you can, open, you can kind of roll it across the other way as well. It is a ball and socket joint, so it's able to go all the way around. And 
So we can go ahead and bring that leg to our supine twist, just drawing that knee gently across the body. And slowly coming back to center. And let's go ahead and move to the other leg, bringing this other knee up towards the chest. Take a moment to just feel the hips release. Wherever you're at today is perfectly fine. And keep in mind, one side might be different than the other side. So you don't always have the same flexibility on one leg. You know, depending on how we sleep, sometimes our back is different or you know, our neck might be a little bit tight. So just being aware of what your body is telling you is the first step to mindful yoga. So we can go ahead and draw that knee across the body, beginning to gently twist the lower back. You might feel your back pop. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to be painful. If you do feel any pain, definitely just listen to your body and take a moment to just relax and breathe. This next pose, we're going to bring both knees in towards the chest. And if you can, holding on to your big toes with your, um, I call them my peace fingers. You can hold on to your toes with your peace fingers and then drawing those knees towards the ground. The happy baby pose, or some people call this dead bug. But we have our knees. The hips are wide and we're trying to just draw all those knees down. And our back is fully grounded. So we do feel the hips grounded down as well as the shoulders here. And if you can't reach the toes, just grab onto the legs, either on the shins or you can even hold right here. If you have a strap, straps are also a great way to just lengthen that lever here. You can use a strap as well. And we'll release that when you're ready. Bring both legs back down. I'm just allowing the arms to rest open on either side. Why don't we take a moment and just let both knees fall open to one side. And then gently move the knees to the other side. And kind of roll them back and forth if you want. Allowing whatever feelings or thoughts that come up to just flow through you. Embracing every aspect of yourself at this time is probably the most important thing you can do to help make sure that we're not projecting more negativity out there. We have enough of that <laughs> right now. So let's go ahead and bring it back to center. And if you're ready, we can go ahead and extend both legs down and prepare for Shavasana to just gently take a few moments, these last few minutes, to just relax and be in your body. If you want to, you can adjust the spine to make it as long as possible. We pull in the crown of the head towards the top of your mat and extending the heels towards the bottom of your mat. And also adjusting the shoulder blades to be flush with the mat can help to help you know, open that heart collarbone area. Softening the belly. Softening the eyelids. Just gently breathing, noticing what you notice. Naturally breathing. And as we're breathing, maybe just thinking about 
on each inhale thinking of maybe one thing that you can be grateful for on this day. You know, it could just be the sun shining outside or the cool temperature. Or it could be that you're here at home with your family, you're able to have family time. Or maybe it's something a little smaller, like you're able to do yoga today. Or you're able to take a break. So just think about some things that you can be grateful for and sort of cultivate that gratitude. Each breath, letting it sort of build up in your heart. And just sending all of that positive energy, positive self-love, appreciation, where you are and what life is bringing you. Allowing that to just permeate through your body. And so we'll slowly just begin to close out our practice today. If I could join me to roll onto one side. Maybe resting your head on your arm. And then gently pressing the body back up to a seated position. We'll come back to our just easy, simple seated pose. And I hope everybody can just take a moment to really appreciate this 30 minutes out of your day that you did, you know, something for yourself today, something that made you feel better. And just sort of taking that and holding it close to your heart for the next days, um, whatever is um embracing that you have this ability to basically transmute whatever emotions might come up. So with that, I'm just going to close out and say thank you so much. Again, my name is Lindsay, and I'm glad that you were here. I'm glad I was able to provide this for you today. So thank you. Namaste.